Holly from Poda Vita. Tell us about Poda Vita. Sure. So we're a, a local for-profit company that makes a water purifier for use in disaster relief in aid context. Um, it's very easy to use, and I can show you how it works. Sure, let's see it. Um, so the way it works is you fill this 10-liter capacity bag with water, press the start button, and leave it out in the sun until the red blinking light turns green. When you see the green light, that means we've measured enough UV exposure from the sun to know that the bacteria and viruses are dead and the water's safe to drink. This is a durable and reusable product, and it's cost competitive with existing solutions at a $50 Point. But on top of that, one of our unique features is that every purifier records its own usage electronically. And that's how we're able to achieve and know that we've achieved over 60% correct usage of our product in the field. So you say that every single one of these is beaming a signal back to, an, you know, as long as there's an internet available? Sure. So not all the time, but the way it works is we have a smartphone-based tool that allows field staff to download the data from the purifier directly to their phone while they're in front of it. That works even if there's no cell network connection there. And that lets the field staff access that data and make better decisions based on it right away. But when they do have cell reception, all that data and GPS information comes back to us so we can do analysis of the data and then send out daily automated reports showing everyone who's a stakeholder in the project how things are going. Wow, that's fantastic. So the water itself, it's, I mean, anybody can drink it. Anybody can drink it, yeah. We, we're specifically targeting uh, microbiological contaminants, so it's not removing chemicals, but it's having the same kind of effectiveness as boiling water or most filters would have. So at the very beginning, you talked about how this was for use in disaster relief. That's right. Why could this not be used in a developing country that doesn't have clean water? Uh, it's, it's great for that as well. Um, what I would emphasize about our value here is that um, among other purification options, we really focused on building in tools to facilitate behavior change because that's the biggest challenge that aid organizations face when they're deploying a household level solution. What do you mean by that? So it turns out that when existing solutions, let's say chlorine tablets, are distributed, usage rates are often as low as 5%. Uh -huh. So that means an aid organization spends $20 on household purifiers, $19 are just thrown away unused. So we want to do better than that, and that's why we focused on the data collection tool that lets the field staff on the ground make much better decisions based on accurate data instead of self-reported usage. And that's how we're able to see over 60% of the usage rates. Okay, I take it you're probably a kind of a small company right now? We are a startup company based in Seattle. So how do you distribute thousands of these? We don't do the distribution. We sell in bulk to aid organizations. We help train their staff, and they do the program implementation in the field. And then we collect the data and give it back to them in the most digestible form. Wow. All right, let's look three years down the road, just sure. three years down the road. Sure. Where are you going to be? We're going to be doing tens if not hundreds of thousands of units you know, of purifiers that we're distributing, supporting several major aid organizations. And I think that'll put us in a spot where we can start to change the equilibrium in the industry of aid by saying, we have solid data on the impact of programs that our customers are doing, and we can benchmark anybody who's doing a household water program using our product. And that'll really change the conversation around donors demanding impact metrics that are quantitative and accurate that they currently cannot be met with existing tools. Is it scalable? It is absolutely scalable. How so? Um, so the, the manufacturing partners that we're using, we don't manufacture ourselves. We have contractors do that. They have very large capacity. And then the other part to scale is simply our, our teaching curriculum and our data analytics. And since those are all software tools, that's very easy to scale. Can it be bigger? It could be bigger. We chose this size because it's manageable at the household level and it avoids some of the engineering trade-offs that you run into where the bigger it is, the heavier it is, um, the easier it is to break and the more expensive it has to be. Fantastic. Charlie, good luck with that. Thank you very much.